Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Steven County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. And as you could probably hear and you could see at the beginning of this short clip, I've got some help I don't need today trying to assist me in uh, fixing this video while scratching and walking in front of my computer monitor. <laughs> Library Connections number 92. This is the Friday, March 18th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, Run, Rose, Run by Dolly Parton and James Patterson. A singer-songwriter goes to Nashville seeking stardom, but is followed by her dark past. At number two, Shadows Real by C.J. Box, the 22nd book in the Joe Pickett series. A fishing guide's murder, stolen falcons, and a Nazi official's photo album heighten the danger. At number three, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number four, High Stakes by Danelle Steele. A new assistant seeks to shake things up at a boutique literary and talent agency where damaging secrets have been kept hidden. And at number five, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series. And she uncovers a horrifying truth. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, One Damn Thing After Another by William P. Barr. The former attorney general for George H.W. Bush and Donald Trump gives his account of those two tenures. At number two, In Love by Amy Bloom. After her husband's Alzheimer's diagnosis, the author travels with him to Dini Taz, a prominent Swiss Right to Die organization. At number three, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. At number four, Allow Me to Retort by Ellie Mistel. The nation's legal analyst and justice correspondent poses its ways to protect the rights of women and people of color. And at number five, From Strength to Strength by Arthur C. Brooks. A columnist for The Atlantic espouses ways to shift priorities and habits to overcome waning abilities in later life. Our first recommended read of this week is the new book, 52 Ways to Walk, The Surprising Science of Walking for Wellness and Joy, One Week at a Time, by Annabelle Streets. Streets grew up in a carless household with little access to public transportation and had to walk to most destinations. That changed when she bought a Fiat and drove everywhere. However, upon learning that the average American only walks 1.4 miles a week, she vowed to reoxygenate her life, and here she shares the numerous benefits of walking. In a complimentary volume to her 2021 book, Windswept, Walking in the Paths of Trailblazing Women, 
which she wrote as Annabelle Abbs, she challenges readers to rethink their relationship with walking. Many of the 52 short chapters detail the distinctive benefits of walking in different conditions or venues, such as inclement weather, for example, in the rain or the cold, or walking on particular landscapes, for example, beside the sea, a riverbed, or in the mud. Other chapters note unusual reasons to walk, including to forage or to purposely get lost. The author even talks about the joys of walking backwards and includes plenty of firsthand experience, notably in the story Take a City Smell Walk, in which she discusses losing her sense of smell after contracting COVID-19. Spiritual, educational, and informative. And that's the book list review. And for Linda's two cents worth, which is worth, well, two cents, I love taking a daily walk. It just plain makes you feel good. So I'm a big proponent of taking a daily walk in between reading, of course. Our second recommended read for this week is also nonfiction. I'm on a nonfiction kick this week. This is the new book by Marie Ivanovich, the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. It's a memoir. It's called Lessons from the Edge. The former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, who got unwillingly caught up in Donald Trump's first impeachment, examines corruption abroad and at home in this stinging memoir. Yovanovitch was removed from her ambassadorship in Kiev in 2019 amid fabricated accusations of collusion with Ukrainian figures to subvert the 2016 U.S. presidential election and claims that she had spoken with disdain about the Trump administration. As she writes, the allegations rose from efforts by Trump's lawyer, Rudolf Giuliani, and a Ukrainian prosecutor to tar candidate Joe Biden and his son Hunter with insinuations of corrupt dealings in Ukraine. Yovanovitch gives a gripping account of this Kafkaia scandal, complete with Trump's drive-by tweets, including, everywhere Marie Yovanovitch went, turned bad, and her moving testimony at congressional impeachment hearings. She sets it within an engrossing recap of her diplomatic career in postings to Somalia and ex-Soviet nations, during which she was subjected to sexist indignities and enmeshed in wrangles to promote reforms aimed at bolstering human rights and reducing rampant corruption in foreign governments and eventually America's. Full of shrewd insights and bitter ironies, Yovanovitch's saga offers a revealing insider's take on the labyrinth of foreign policy and on one of the most sordid episodes of Trump's presidency. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Switching gears now with our first audiobook recommendation, this is a thriller. It's the new Lucy Foley novel, the Paris Apartment. The audio is read by Claire Corbett. From the author of The Hunting Party and The Guest List comes this exceedingly clever new novel. Jess arrives at her brother Ben's apartment in Paris to find that Ben seems to have disappeared. She talks to the other residents of the small apartment building but no one seems to know what might have happened to him. Although we know from chapters written from the resident's point of view that something is not quite right. What's especially interesting about the novel, apart from the deft characterizations and the overall feeling of dread, is the way Foley is cagey about exactly what kind of a story this is. Could it be a riff on the Agatha Christie abundance of suspects theme? Could it be a twist on the traditional locked room mystery? 
Could it be a psychological thriller? Could we be dealing with an unreliable narrator? And who exactly is Ben anyway? What kind of a man is he? What is he capable of? The author keeps Jess and the readers guessing right up to the end. A fine suspenser from a writer who consistently delivers the goods. And that's the book list review. Moving on to our second audiobook recommendation of the week. This is the first book in the Anna Pigeon mystery series. It's called Track of the Cat by Nevada Barr. So if you wish to binge read a series you haven't read before, and you haven't read this series before, check it out. The audiobook is read by Barbara Rosenblatt. The texture, scents, and sounds of the West Texas wilderness permeate this forceful debut, in which the murder of a National Park Service ranger illuminates the conflict between those who want to place our country's open spaces and wildlife under government protection and those who want to profit from them. Anna Pigeon has fled New York City after the accidental death of her husband, and she now works as a law enforcement ranger at Guadalupe Mountains National Park. There, she finds the remains of her fellow ranger, Sheila Drury, who apparently was clawed to death by a mountain lion. Although an autopsy confirms this judgment, Anna becomes convinced that the claw marks have been faked. Her superiors discourage her from probing further, but another supposedly accidental death goads her into investigating Sheila's activities before her death, her campaign to open up the park to the public, and her relationships with a young divorcee and with a powerful rancher opposed to Park Service policies. Anna is sure that the clues reside in the thousands of snapshots the dead woman took, photos that show signs of having been rifled through. A park ranger herself, Barr develops a complex, credible, and capable heroine who believes in truth and justice, while remaining conscious of the ambiguities of human existence. So if you're looking for a new series, check out Track of the Cat. Our first streaming recommendation for this week is the 2002 film adaptation directed by Spike Jones and starring Nicolas Cage, Meryl Streep, and Chris Cooper. Charlie Kaufman struggled to adapt Susan Orling's best-selling novel, The Orchard Thief, into a movie. So he decided to write a movie about his struggle instead. That's the simple premise of Spike Jones's audacious adaptation. But the film is a lot more complicated and surprising than that. Nicholas Cage gives two of his best performances as Kaufman and his fictional twin Donald while Meryl Streep plays Orlean from the Variety Review. As in being John Malkovich, Kaufman's imaginative leaps are perfectly served by Jones's Quicksilver directing style, able to communicate key information in highly economical ways. Jones keeps the film light on its feet, even as it ponders in a nifty early sequence, the creation of the world, or the way nature has matched individual flowers to their perfectly color-coordinated pollinating bees. And that review is from Variety. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is a new episode of the great PBS science series, Nova. It's called Augmented. 
follow the dramatic personal journey of Hugh Here, a biophysicist working to create brain-controlled robotic limbs. At age 17, Hare's legs were amputated after a climbing accident. Frustrated by the crude prosthetic limbs he was given at the time, Hare set out to remedy their design, leading him to a career as an inventor of innovative prosthetic devices. Now, Hare is teaming up with an injured climber and a surgeon at a leading Boston hospital to test a new approach to surgical amputation that allows prosthetic limbs to move and feel like the real thing. Hare's journey is a powerful tale of innovation and the inspiring story of a personal tragedy transformed into a lifelong quest to help others. And that episode of Nova is top notch. I highly recommend it. And our third streaming recommendation for this week is the 1986 classic, Blue Velvet. The film was directed by David Lynch and stars Kyle MacLachlan. David Lynch delivers one of his masterpieces with Blue Velvet, starring Kyle MacLachlan as a college student who returns home and uncovers a sadistic criminal conspiracy after finding a severed ear in his yard. Isabella Rossellini, Dennis Hopper, and Laura Dern co-star. Lynch earned an Oscar nomination for Best Director due to his work on the film, which in classic Lynch fashion, cuts to the core of a seemingly idyllic American small town. From Variety's review, Blue Velvet finds David Lynch back on familiar, strange territory. The picture takes a disturbing and at times devastating look at the ugly underside of middle American life. The modest proportions of the film are just right for the writer-director's desire to investigate the inexplicable demons that drive people to deviate from expected norms of behavior and thought. So this is obviously a drama. If you're in the mood for a top-notch drama this weekend, check out Blue Velvet. Moving on to our Hoopla recommendation for this week, I'm going to recommend the complete TV series, The Irish RM. Let me tell you a little about it. Peter Bowles stars in this lighthearted drama series as Major Sinclair Yeats, a retired English army officer who becomes a resident magistrate in turn of the 20th century West Ireland. Living in a ramshackle country house, surrounded by the community's eccentric inhabitants, Major Yeats struggles to apply judicial logic in a land where the inevitable never happens, but the improbable frequently does. Based on the works of Somerville and Ross, these winning adaptations were shot entirely on location in County Kildare and capture the beauty of the lush Irish countryside. This complete series also stars Beryl Reed, Brian Murray, Niall Tobin, and Sarah Bedell. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, let me know. Send me an email. My email address is my last name and my first initial at stls.org. That's Rhymer L R E I M E R L at stls.org. You can also, of course, feel free to drop by the library or give us a call. We like questions. Current library hours are as follows. We're open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
and we are closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of useful information on our website. To offer you a Cliff Notes version today, I'm just going to talk about three sections of our homepage that will allow you to access cool stuff. The first is the link that says Calendar on our homepage. If you click that or tap it, you'll be redirected to our calendar of events where you can register for programs and see what's going on both in the library and also the remote programming we have. If you click on the word catalogs, a menu will open that will allow you to access all the library's catalogs for both physical content like print books and digital content like eBooks. And then if you click on the resources menu link seen at the top of the page there, also bordered in red, a menu will open and you can do a bunch of stuff through that menu. You can register to vote. You can access anti-racism resources. But today I want to direct you to the research and learning page on our website. So that's the third option on the resources menu, research and learning. And if you click or tap that, the research and learning page will display. And this lists some of the most popular databases that we offer, otherwise known as online research resources. But I find that a mouthful. So basically, these are credible research resources, which I'm going to refer to as databases from now on. And these are available to you as a cardholder, but they're not free to everyone everywhere. You get them as a cardholder, but the library and or the library system pays for these. And through our website, through the research and learning page on our website, you find some of the most popular ones you can access, including Mango Languages, if you want to learn another language even Pirate, and the Heritage Quest resource or database, and that's for genealogical research. And those are great resources. And if you're going to do really in-depth research, though, you want to go all the way down to the bottom of the page. In the last little paragraph there, it says, would you like to find more databases and resources? And then below that little paragraph in purple, it says, find the complete list of STLS databases here. That's the link you want to click on if you're doing in-depth research. It's going to redirect you to the databases page on the STLS website. And you see a photo of the top portion of that page on the right side of your screen. So here we see a large portion of the list of databases that you can access for in-depth research on tons of topics, criminal justice, the culinary arts, diversity, gender studies. There's a health database. If you want to do health research, there's one on opposing viewpoints. If you have to write a paper on a subject that has two sides to the story, which is usually the case, you can look at that. There are several academic resources if you're a college or high school student doing research. There's even one on gardening and landscaping, on the hospitality industry, and a home improvement collection too. So lots of stuff on the STLS databases page which you can access through our website, or you can go directly to that page by typing www.stls.org forward slash databases into your web browser. StarCat and the BookMine app. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all cardholders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System otherwise known as STLS. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. You can access StarCat online at starcat.stls.org. That's S-T-A-R-C-A-T dot stls.org. Or, as you might imagine, there's an app for that. It's called BookMine. And it's spelled a little differently. It's B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E. And that will give you direct access to StarCat through your mobile device. And you can find the BookMine app in your app store. The Digital Catalog and its companion app, Libby. The Digital Catalog 2 is available to all cardholders of all Southern Tier Library System member libraries. And you can find it online at stls.overdrive.com or you can download the Libby app found in your app store to your mobile device. 
the digital catalog features ebooks, audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library card holders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking and watching this and you're thinking, well, why is it just for Corning Library card holders or SSC Library card holders? That's because this particular service, Hoopla, is one that the Southeast Bend County Library pays for. The others, the digital catalog and of course StarCat are collection wide catalogs and all member libraries contribute to them. So that's what the difference is. If you want to check out the Hoopla catalog online, you go to hooplaDigital.com and of course there's an app, Hoopla, for your mobile device. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library services, you are welcome always to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number is 607-936-3713. You can also connect with the library through social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. The library has five blogs we'd like to draw your attention to. There's the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at sscl.book.club and is pretty much what you would expect. It's information about the monthly book club for adults. There's the Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog, which is found at CorningNYHistory.com. Creation Stationery, the Creative Makerspace blog, found at CreationStationery.com. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, which is found at storymusings.blogspot.com, and Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog, which you may have guessed is hosted by yours truly, which is found at ssctech.com. And briefly, our references of the week and our catalog information. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week and happy spring. And you can now see one of my assistants behind me. <laughs> Have a great week.